Hello everyone, my name is Chastity Barnes and I'm currently doing research on breast cancer liver metastasis and I'm working with the, the CBEC to come up with a workflow for the usage of cancer bio portals to generate clinical and genomic data on different cancer studies of interest. And so today in this video, I will be showing you how to run a query on the portal. And so for my research, I have been looking into breast cancer liver metastasis. And so I've been using the metastatic breast cancer study that was conducted by NSERM in 2016. And so as you can see, I have already selected that one right here. And so if I scroll down, I am able to modify my query in this section right here. And so I can select to have whole exome sequencing or just copy number alterations data, or I can have both as it is set in the default. I can also select my patient slash case set right here. Using this little drop down, I can change the default to anything that is in this list. And if I wanted to get a specific set um, or build my own, then I could use the user-defined case list that is available in this dropdown, and that would enable me to do so. Also right here, I am able to enter the genes of interest that I want to study. And so as you can see, I've already selected a few of interest. Um, and so as you can see down at the bottom, it says that all gene symbols are valid. But for example, if I entered a gene, symbol that was not valid, it would check for it, let me know that there's an invalid gene symbol present, and then let me know specifically which gene is incorrect. And so I can just go ahead and delete that out and then press submit query. So the first screen that pops up is the Oncoprint. And basically the Oncoprint is just a summary of all the genetic alterations that are present for each gene that you queried. And so for example, the MZ gene is prevalent with a lot of amplifications and a few missense mutations. And so each column is a different sample while every row is a different gene. And down at the bottom, it gives me the legend for the different colors um, that are included in my Oncoprint, letting me know what genetic alteration that is. So that is why I can, can conclusively say that MZ had a lot of amplifications because as you can see, the amplifications are red. Um, but I also have the ability to add different clinical tracks to my Oncoprint. And so if I wanted to get the mutation spectrum, the sample type, or the study ID, I could get that by using the add clinical tracks. I am also able to sort my data by mutation type or um, driver versus passenger mutation and all of that. I can change the way that my mutations are colored. So if I just wanted to get the color by type, I could do that. And then I can change what is viewed in my uncle print. And so I can put it by events per sample versus patient. Um, I could take out um, and not show the unanswered columns or anything that I would like using this view down drop. And then I also can download my Onco print. Here is the cancer type summary tab where it shows me the number of alterations for all the specific genes in my query based on the cancer study, the cancer type, or the cancer type detailed. And so right here, I can change what's on the Y axis. I can sort my X axis by different values. I can change the number of minimum total cases and the number of percentage of altered cases that are shown. Um, and here it just gives me the alteration frequency for the entire query of genes. And so as you can see, uh, most of the alterations present were for mutations. And then up here, um, I could change it to look at the individual genes that are in my query if I would like. On the mutual exclusivity tab, it gives, it pairs up the genes for you and then tells you if they have a tendency to co-occur or be mutually exclusive. Um, and so that's what you are viewing here. 
and it gives me the p values the q values so let me know if they're significant or not and then up here i can negate to show the ones that are significant only the ones that only that co-occur or just the ones that are mutually exclusive Here on the plots tab, I am able to plot any two data types. And so here it has um, the copy number alterations for the MZ gene. And on this side, it gives me a little legend for the different mutations and amplifications and copy number alterations that are occurring. And on this side over here, I can change the data that's on my horizontal axis and my vertical axis by just using these. I can swap the axes um, and I can search for specific cases or proteins using the search bars that are provided. On the mutations tab here, I am able to get the mutations that occur for each individual gene. And so each lollipop here is representative of a different amino acid that is represented down at the bottom of the screen. And those amino acids are associated with a specific sample which is provided to you, and it tells you the mutation type for each of these amino acids and the copy number alteration provided for each of these amino acids, as well as the number of mutations that are in each sample. And so each lollipop, like I said, represents a different amino acid, and the distance of that dot at the top from the bar shows the number of mutations that occurred um, with each protein change. And so if I want more information, I can hover over that. And then down at the bottom, it highlights the information that is associated with the amino acid that I have highlighted. On the comparisons tab, I am able to compare the information for different groups and look at how they compare to each other. So here, for example, is a little chart that has the HER2 samples and it shows me the information for the altered groups versus the unaltered groups. And here's a little legend of just breakdown. And so it shows me the differences in the HER2 positive cases versus the HER2 negative cases. And it does that for the altered group and the unaltered group. And up here, I can change the way that my data is plotted, and I'm also able to swap the axes and change the horizontal bars as well. And here on the Pathways tab, I am able to look at the pathways that um, include my genes that are in my query. And so here's a pathway that's already pulled up, and as you can see, the PIK3CA gene has a thick border surrounding it. And so what this means is that that is my gene of interest. And so every pathway that includes your genes, the genes that you are interested in looking at, will have that thick border. As you can see over here, it provides me with different pathways that match my genes of that are in the query. And the score here lets me know the significance of that pathway. And so as I scroll down, it will, the number or the score may change. And that just means that it's less significant as you go down. Here on the download tab, I am able to look at and download all the information that is included in my query. So any information that is included, I will have for future usage. So I can get um, information for a specific sample if I would like, or I can get information for just the copy number alterations, the, just the altered samples, whatever I choose, it can be downloaded and used for future reference. And so really quickly, if I ever wanted to modify my query and let's say change a gene or change my study altogether, I can click the modify query button right here or the little edit button found next to the genes. So I'm going to click that really quick. And here I am able, I'm back at the home page and I am able to navigate through the studies and change that if I would like. 
And if I scroll down, I can modify the information that I include in my query. And so I can change my genes, change the patient case set, change the genomic profiles, whatever I would like to do. And so I hope you have found this video useful. In our next video, we will go over how to take this information and interpret it for our specific cancer studies. So I will see you guys later. Bye, guys.